to a very early edition of the rugby show here on the 42.ie we're coming to you live on facebook so if you're on your way to work or if you're already in the office and watching fair play to you uh, ahead of the uh, third test the decisive test i mean so potent was murray kinsler's uh, post-match dissection of the lions victory in the second test that i think steve hansen actually has a warrant out for his capture but murray does join us now very briefly he's peeked out of his trough and uh, he can uh, shed some light uh, on the mood in the camp and all that uh, sort of stuff. Murray, how are things? Yeah, good. Just got back up to Auckland today after a few nice days down in Queenstown, a beautiful part of the world. A bit of and for the journalists as well as the players. So uh, all good. Looking forward to a, a massive weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk team selection, Murray. I mean, no real surprises, I suppose, in Warren, Gatt's, uh, Warren Gatlin's team. Uh, I think there was a, probably a, a fair argument for Jack McGrath's inclusion instead of uh, Maka Vunipola. But uh, were you shocked to see Vunipola retain his place? Yeah, not really. I think Gatlin is, is a huge fan of Mako, um, And it, just a week before, he was kind of loading his all-round game. Uh, he said he's improved at scrum time, although I think that might be a slight concern for the Lions. They really need to dominate that area in the third test. Um, he actually kind of excused uh, Marco Vunipola's uh, lack of discipline in that second test. You know, four penalties against him, but he said a couple of those were borderline, and he didn't feel like it was a player losing his head on the big occasion. I think Jack McGrath will be disappointed, obviously, not to have squeezed in there, considering he was strong off the bench, but Marco Vunipola's got a good body of work behind him, and we know Gallen's not really the kind of coach who makes those uh, big rash decisions, uh, although he has made some <laughs> controversial ones in the past. Nothing this week, and we're not going to mention that incident again. And um, I think everyone's happy enough with that, with that selection. I don't think that you can have major gripes with it. There's a couple of guys unlucky to miss out. Ian Henderson potentially could have featured if they'd had a 6-2 split on the bench. Um, and he's been one of the guys uh, who were really impressed behind that test squad. But it's a pretty uh, settled and probably confident Lions team after that win in the second test. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the All Blacks team selection, then Murray, I guess, it was actually probably more surprising than the Lions starting 15 or even their 23. Uh, I, I know Eddie O'Sullivan yesterday joined us in the studio and he was sort of predicting that um, Faki, Faki Toa would get the uh, nod in the centre and instead they've gone with Laumape who has never started a test with the All Blacks before but uh, ha did well um, in, his, uh, in the second test where he, he kind of attacked that channel, that 10-12 channel of the Lions as we'd spoken about previously where he probably could have done with a little bit of support with, it, with another centre there with him. Um, but I, I suppose Jordy Barrett at 15 as well, a massive call because uh, Barrett, for all of his talents, maybe didn't have the best of outings when he's already played the Lions on this tour. I thought he had, thought he had really good moments in that, in that Hurricanes game. He even saw his creative skills kind of setting up that Wesley Houston try towards the end of the game. Um, he's a big unit. He's six foot five. He, he doesn't look like a fullback at all when you, when you stand beside him. And we actually spoke to him and, and Bowden together today. And, and you know, Jordy was towering over his brother. Um, he seems quite composed, a little bit more nervous, obviously, than Bowden, who's, who's got 52 caps and World Player of the Year under his belt. Um, Jordy Barrett's an exceptional talent. He's been sensational for the Hurricanes all year, and he's really been on the, on the radar. You know, he did the apprenticeship role last uh, November with the All Blacks, travelled to Chicago and to Europe with them. So they've certainly been grooming, grooming him to come in and feature. I don't think they would have expected to use him this early. Ben Smith's not here. Um, there's good news, obviously, that his concussion actually has been kind of cleared and he's actually just had an inner ear issue which is fantastic for him but he's a massive miss for, for the All Blacks so Jordy Barrett's been shoved into that role probably a little bit earlier than the All Blacks would have would have liked to do brilliant player but like we have to be honest here there is a, a massive element of risk involved in it. you know he, it's unknown he's a very composed young man but he's never played in a game like this before and um, so I think the Lions will certainly look at that and uh, the positional play maybe more so than the direct competition in the air just to try and move him around the backfield a little bit and give him a test that he hasn't had against two kickers like Farrell and Sexton before. Um, you mentioned the midfield, Le Mape, you, you spoke about his brilliant ball carrying and there's no doubt about that, he's an athletic freak. There's no one really like him in, in, in that midfield for the for the, the all backs there. He's just extremely powerful in a squad of extremely powerful guys. 
Um, but he did make errors when he came on. You know, he he um, he, he opened up that gap for the first try when Jamie George went through. Um, and Johnny Sexton kind of picked him out, you know, he kind of gave Johnny Sexton the option here, take the front door, and Johnny Sexton just slipped Jamie George into that gap. He just shot a little bit uh, early up onto Owen Farrell in behind in the second wave. And then he had that uh, knock-on as well in the kind of key passage uh, around 73, 74 minutes when the All-Backs were going through phases, but the lines were hamming them backwards. Um, and he just looked a, bit, a little bit eager to make a big carry, drop the ball. So, yeah, there, there are massive uh, upsides with both those guys. But there's also an element of risk there. And I think that's why we're seeing maybe Julian Sevilla come back in, uh, an experienced head, a guy who's won a lot of test caps and, won, and scored a lot of tries, um, and a guy who also is going to run down that 10-12 channel um, and really give Sexton and Farrell a massive test in, in that area. So there's, there's a slight sense that Hansen is rolling the dice here. Um, and we probably anticipated Gatlin being the one in that position coming into this third test. And I think Gatlin is enjoying the fact that he has that settled team um, and he kind of perceives it as the All Blacks maybe trying to adapt to the Lions' strengths in terms of their, their aerial um, ability with Jordy Barrett. Um, and I think he just feels he's got the, the upper hand maybe in selection. So really interesting the way that's been flipped on its head. Yeah, big time. We might get to um, the pressers in a sec. But first, I've got a couple of questions for you here. Murray, uh, Fed McHugh, he asks, um, or he says, we may target their inexperienced backs. Where will New Zealand target and feel they have the upper hand against us? Nice use of the word us there, Fed. I like the way you're committed. Completely new player, obviously. <laughs> uh, I think they'll look to, to, to really lift that tempo of the game back up to where it was in the first test. You look at that second test, it was a weird game. You know, it was only 24 minutes, 24 seconds of ball in play time, which is incredibly low for, for a test match. You know, if you're looking at Six Nations this year, it was 39 minutes, 42 seconds, I think, is the mm. average ball in play time. And the last World Cup was something very similar. So, you know, you're shaving 10 minutes off the actual ball in play time. That clearly gives the Lions an advantage in terms of slowing the pace of the game, which we had said they definitely needed to do be uh, before that second test. And um, the weather, the red card, um, even the Lions penalties concessions actually worked into into that that general kind of theme of the game. And it definitely helped the Lions. Um, they, they weren't as run off their feet in those long multi-phase passages. Um, and the only time we saw the All Blacks really kind of stretched them was the, the time Farrell kicked long. He was kind of taken out by Cody Taylor, so the kick chase was slightly weakened. And you saw the All Blacks go right up the pitch. They went wide, wide. And then there was a, a grubber kick from Bowden Barrett. Normally, he's so accurate with those. He just slightly overcooked it, and Kieran Reid couldn't get there. I thought that was a really, really key moment in the game. And I was actually surprised that Barrett did, didn't actually nail that little specific bit of skill. But that was the kind of example of how, um, or the, rather the style of play that the, the Lions have managed to limit in, in this uh, series. You know, we haven't really seen the All Blacks open up and I think that's going to be the key for them is to lift the tempo, get really aggressive clear outs. They're always simple in what they do. Their, their, their game plan is not extremely complex. It's about getting quick ball um, and using their fitness and their handling skills uh, to really lift the tempo. But the weather, I think, probably won't play, quite play into that. It was just torrential downpour there and it's looking like it's going to be wet again. So I think the Lions will be happy with yeah, that. Yeah, that actually answers uh, Kitza Watts' question. He was wondering what the forecast is for Saturday. The, that the deluge last Saturday had, or had to have an impact, uh, which it absolutely did. And I mean, as you mentioned there, if it's raining again, obviously that's that's going to limit maybe both sides' ability to uh, to go wide and spread the ball. Um, Oshin Hayes asks, uh, is it the right team selection for the Lions? And if not, what replacements should have made it into the 23? I guess this is one that comes down to your own opinion, Murray, but I guess you're reasonably content with what Gatlin has done. Yeah, I think the temptation was probably to add a bit more um, set-piece uh, strength because we just mentioned that game, and it's going to be a key battle. Um, you think about all those penalty concessions the Lions had early in the second half in the second test, and so many of them came after they gave up a first phase game line to the to the All Blacks, where they let Mate and Naholo off a scrum, uh, just battered over the game line and, and got them moving forward, got the lines coming backwards, where you start making poor decisions, you start forgetting about that offside line slightly, you get a little bit hasty in competing for the breakdown ball. That's where those penalties come from. It's not just stupid decision making, it's being under pressure from losing that game line. Um, and I think that's going to be a, just an immensely important battle in this game, particularly with that weather. So. Looking at that team selection, I think the temptation would have been maybe a Peter O'Mahony to compete at the line-out time, but you couldn't break up that back row, or, or maybe a Jack McGrath, who's possibly the stronger scrummer. I would say would say the uh, stronger scrum prop at loose head. 
Um, just to get that nudge on, so the All Blacks aren't playing off that incredibly clean ball that they managed to get uh, quite often in the second test. Um, and even when they were 15 men, there was one stage where Naholo went over the gain line off a scrum, really clean ball. They took another phase around the corner. On the third phase, Kano carried right through Owen Farrell, um, and Sean O'Brien gave up a penalty. And that was a bit of a formula, I think, that the All Blacks are going to look to again in the third test. So I guess the consideration for the Lions was, do we add a little bit more set piece? Um, but I just think Allen couldn't break up. He, he just didn't want to break up that winning momentum. Um, and he wanted to reward those players who achieved something pretty um, special, albeit against 14 men in the, in the second test. Yeah, which is probably fair enough, I guess. Um, in terms of the press conferences then, and you mentioned, uh, you alluded to Warren Gatlin's confidence. Uh, what was the view from Steve Hansen and the New Zealand camp? I mean, I think this week, maybe over here, it's been dominated somewhat by the idea that the Lions are relaxing or at least they were early in the week and enjoying some downtime. I was wondering is there any reaction to that from the Kiwis over there? Yeah, like the All Blacks haven't really bitten on anything we've asked them a few times. They're more kind of, I think, amused almost by it um, and certainly the public is, you know, what is, what is this team doing? Going bungee jumping, drinking beer, off in helicopter rides the week of the biggest test match um, of recent history really. Um, I think it makes sense from the Lions' point of view to have done that. These guys are at the end of an 11-month season and a massive fatigue. Every single one of them is going to be carrying some sort of niggle. And they certainly seemed very refreshed and in great spirits coming away from that camp. Um, just in terms of the All Blacks, uh, I guess, message, Hansen was kind of strangely, um, not negative, but he was kind of talking down the occasion. He, he spoke a lot about how this game won't define this uh, batch of All Blacks. Um, I think it was really interesting. He's trying to take a little bit of pressure off his players, and it, it probably does reflect what's changed with the Lions having leveled the series. You know, there are maybe question marks around this crop of all backs. They've lost Richie McCaw, Dan Carter, Mananu, Conrad Smith, all that experience, Kevin Mialamu. Um, and then going into this series, they've lost Dane Coles and Ben Smith, who are two really key leaders and probably the guys who've been moulded to, to guide this group of young players. Um, so I think maybe in the last, or, uh, last quarter, of the second test, they lost a little bit of leadership or, or lacked that. Um, and I think that's the big question mark uh, Hansen has around his own team now. Is Bowden Barrett going to step up um, and really dominate this test match, whereas he's been a little bit quiet in the first two ga games, probably losing out by being pushed to fullback, um, almost certainly losing out in that way. But I think Hansen, once you know, he asked the question himself, this game is going to say a lot about this team and, and where we are in our development. Um, so it was interesting to see him messaging it like that and and trying to take a little bit of pressure off the players because, yeah, they're under pressure to keep that record at Eden Park as well. For sure, absolutely. Um, Murray, we'd better let you go and get ready for a, an interview on Sky Sports New Zealand. Before I do that, have you got a prediction? Do you think the Lions can get over the line this time versus 15 men, presumably? Yeah, I think that's the key point. Um, I know I predicted an All Blacks win last weekend and it obviously didn't, didn't happen. I do think they're a better team and I think their favouritism is absolutely justified, even without those those key leaders. I just think that with 15 players on the pitch, if they can get that same gain line that they got in the second quarter um, of, of last weekend's match, that they will score those tries, that they will manage to stretch the lines in a way we haven't really seen them do so far. Um, and I think, especially in that ground in Eden Park, they're so strong. Um, but but I definitely, I feel the Lions had a better chance than I thought I would have uh, before yeah. this tour. They've, they've come together nicely, a really gritty bunch um, and while they may not be the most talented team in the world, they're going to be resilient, they're going to be uh, fighting for every little set-piece battle and in the tackle every single time. Um, and they've experienced there, uh, we mentioned the All-Backs maybe don't have a little bit of that in certain positions. So I think it's going to be a closer battle than I had anticipated initially, but I do think the All-Backs are, are going to get the job done. Oh, that's grim, but uh, looking forward to it nonetheless. It should be a good one. Murray Kinsel, thanks a million for joining us. Uh, enjoy that interview and best of luck with everything during the week. Enjoy the test as well. That is all we've got time for on the Rugby Show here on the 42.ie. We'll be back, obviously after that decisive third test uh, where hopefully we'll speak to Murray again. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for your comments. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week and until Saturday, take it easy.